when you're baptized and you're thrown off trust me when i say you'll be thrown all the way off and of course no one's unredeemable you are always redeemable but i say that to say like it would have been better if you hadn't even come to know the Lord in the first place because that's how much the attack would be. So welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Ku and I make faith-based content here on YouTube and I absolutely love doing that because I love making content for the Lord. I just love it. I love it. Nobody can stop me. And if you try and stop me, I shall show you the sword of prayer and bring the kingdom of darkness down <laughs> what is this energy it's not even coffee it's not coffee it's really not coffee and it's not fasting so what is it i think the energy is that this video is so key i feel like well do you know what let me pray right now because i feel like the enemy is just gonna try and just do something with this video so i pray right now in the name of jesus that the ears that are listening to this video will be so immensely blessed by it that they will know exactly what to do when in a scenario like this in the name of yeshua we pray yeah amen so this video is for those that are about to get baptized that's been baptized that know somebody that's about to be baptized if so send it to them because it's pivotal that you know the keys and the strategies of the enemy when it comes to baptism so we finna dive into scripture today because i need you to know sis as i've seen this time and time in my own life in those around me like i've seen this time and time again and you know what something about the devil as well is that he don't use new strategies he don't use new ways his ways are old but they tried and tested and they work sadly so they're not gonna work anymore because we are doing this video in the name of yeshua okay let's just dive into scripture first peter 3 21 to 22 what does it say it says there is also an anti-type which now saves us baptism not the removal of the filth of the flesh but the answer of a good conscience towards god through the resurrection of jesus christ who has gone into heaven is and is at the right hand of god angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him so let's just establish that first and foremost baptism is a covenant it's a covenant when you're about to be baptized it's not you can't look at the water like it's a pool or it's an ocean or wherever you're getting baptized maybe, maybe it's a puddle i don't know you can't be looking at the water thinking that it's just something in the flesh that you're doing as a declaration to god mm -mm. it's a covenant it signifies a cleansing it signifies putting off the old and wearing the new it signifies the concept or the term or the idea of being born again what does that mean it means that you are given a new chance of life and a chance of life that has the consciousness towards god that has the assurance that you are now walking as a child of god not a child of god that does not know her father or his father and just was doing the most out in these streets okay this is a covenant it's a new way of life it's a it's a way to say father i recognize i've been living x y and z cleanse me i repent i'm sorry for the way that i've been living and this is how i want to live i want to go forward with the consciousness of living unto you there are two covenants in this life that you'll make covenants that anger the enemy it's the covenant of baptism a covenant that says i finna walk with you lord i am gonna walk with you and the second covenant that you would be making if the lord allows you to is to be married those two covenants will be immensely attacked and you need to know that because you can't be walking around in your walk with christ thinking you are not gonna be a target to the enemy sis just whoever told you that lie go and get them a bible so that being said let's go to our scripture for this topic and that is in matthew 4 1 to 11 it's a chunky one but we're gonna get through it okay it says then jesus was led by the spirit by the spirit can't just 
if that is just the takeaway that you're taking away with you then so be it by the spirit sis so when you get baptized and you're walking into the wilderness please please remember this that jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil my days my days after he fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was famished the temper came eh? the tempter came and said to him if you are the son of god command these stones to become bread but he answered it is written man does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of god then the devil took him into the holy city had him stand on the highest point of the temple and said to him if you are the son of god throw yourself down (laughs) i don't know where this accent's coming from but just to jazz it up a little for it is written he will command his angels concerning you and with their hands they will lift you up so that you will not strike your foot against a stone jesus said to him once again it is written you are not to put the lord your god to the test again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their grandeur okay and he said to him i will give you all these things if you throw yourself to the ground and worship me what get away then jesus said to him go away satan for it is written you are to worship the lord your god and serve only him then the then the devil left him and angels came and began ministering to his needs so what can we learn from this juicy juicy scripture number one is this the devil has no grounds to take you to court so he by force seeks to blemish your records again let me hear you say again this is like somebody bring me the pulpit please the reason why i say again is because look the bible tells us that the baptism is a baptism of cleansing the cleansing of the old ways a covenant to say lord i want to live by your ways i want to be so close to you i want to give away my old things i want to give away the old ways of doing life and do a new thing like walk in a new way a way that is pleasing unto you right the bible then says that when the lord forgives us he actually throws our sins into the sea of forgetfulness not a lake not a river not a puddle a sea and a sea is vast so go and try and find your records there because it's not there it's a sea of forgetfulness meaning it's vanished when i forgive you i forget us humans don't tend to forget we still remember those records records and sometimes the enemy knows that and will use that against us to now blemish our records going forward i hope you're with me so i say that to say the devil has no grounds to say jesus done this so can i do this because he always needs permission he always needs permission to act whether it's permission from the lord because that's what we see in job or permission because you said something or done something that opened a way for the enemy to be like "Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, i'm coming in now so i say that to say when you get baptized your records are now what wiped out wiped away thrown into the sea of forgetfulness because you have repented i'm i'm assuming here because you wouldn't get to the stage of baptism if you haven't repented and so the devil has nothing to hold against you in the in the courtroom of asking for permission right and so when you get baptized sis he is going to try and blemish those records he's going to try and give you something perhaps it's the old man that you've been talking to perhaps it's that you are sexually you know aroused and you want to be touched by a man maybe it's that you feel tempted to go and take a hit of something that you've previously taken a hit of sis please just know been there done that and i am here to say have things in place to make sure that you are not caught off guard sis that's all i'm saying don't be caught off guard number two is this that this will either ground you and ground you so so well or throw you and throw you so so off committing to the lord requires all of you not some of you that's why the bible talks about being lukewarm and being spit spat out of 
the Lord's mouth because you're neither here nor there. And so you can't give 50-50 to the world and to the Lord. And so this trial, this temptation, the season of testing your faith after your baptism will either seriously ground you in the Lord and you'll really learn your identity in the Lord because that's the first thing that the devil tried to attack with this scripture. He says, if you really are the son of God, like whenever he presents anything is always first to question his identity in it. So there is significance to that. And so you will either really be rooted in your identity in him and in your your spirit, or you will be thrown all the way off and it will almost be like you did not change. You didn't go through the baptism. You didn't go through repentance because the Bible also says that when you are cleansed of the stronghold or like the strong men, AKA the demons, the devils that you've been dealing with in your previous, you know, ways of life, they will come back with more to find a vacant home in you. So when you're baptized and you're thrown off, trust me when I say you'll be thrown all the way off. And of course, no one's unredeemable. You are always redeemable. But I say that to say like, it would have been better if you hadn't even come to know the Lord in the first place because that's how much the attack would be. Because the Bible says that. It's not my own words. The Bible says that. And this isn't because God is insecure, like he needs you to like just confess your love for him and ensure that you love him so much. Like it's not that. He knows full well that this is a warfare relationship. This isn't a flesh relationship. It's in the spirit. And for you to tap into that level of like grounding. And of course, at the end of the warfare, we know that the Lord sits above all principalities and power. But how does he know that? How does he rest assured that actually you have the strength to fights in this relationship that you have the strength to stay in this relationship to stay grounded in this relationship if he's not going to test your faith in it you see what i'm saying so this is is basically like going on a date with somebody that says i'm also going on a date with seven other women and then now you go on to a fully pledged marital relationship with him like how do you know that this person's going to be faithful to you when he's just told you he's in a relationship with seven different women. Like, it's the same when it comes to the Lord. Like, you might feel like you're taking a baptism, you're, you're doing the baptism and it's amazing, yada, 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 and it is amazing. But how can the Lord be rest assured that you will always be in a relationship with him if you aren't tested somehow? And so it's just like that. We are in a relationship with the Lord. When we are baptized, when we give our lives to Christ, it's a beginning of a relationship with the Lord. And I say that to say, you can't be one foot here, one foot there, and expect that your relationship with the Lord will be fruitful, that you'll be like, it just, just think of it like a marital relationship. There's so many references that that pertain to this, you know, idea of like us being the bride of, of Yeshua and Christ being our our groom, our our head, and you know stuff like that. Like our husbands, we're waiting for him to come back and get us, and stuff like that. And so there's a lot of references when it comes to like marital relationships and the relationship with the Lord. And so I say that to say, like, if you are unfaithful from the beginning, how does the Lord rest assured that this is going to be a forever relationship? And so when it comes to baptisms, you have to expect that there is going to be a warfare to test your faith to see whether you are going to be grounded in Him or whether you're going to be like right taking the first flight back because we're not doing this lord this is too hard you're not worth it you know so someone so close to me and i say so close to me if you know you know but someone so close to me got baptized and it was an amazing time it was so beautiful to witness her faith and stuff like that but then and she was on fire before her baptism but then she got baptized Her fire lasted around, I would say, a month. And then, bam. No word of God came from her mouth. No visiting or no being rooted in a family of fellowshipping. Like, finding 101 excuses not to fast. Finding 101 excuses not to go to the Lord's house and worship. And just be grounded in that, like, routine of worship, you know? And I'm not saying that all of these things ensures that you have a good relationship with the lord like it's definitely a relationship of uh, of heart to heart spirit to spirit but i say that to say we are called to judge the fruits of the spirit right 
and from my judgment and i'm happy to be wrong and i pray that i'm wrong but from my judgment it seems that she's so far away from the lord than she once used to be and this is actually why i made this video because i feel like i've seen this so many times over and over again so the third point is actually by far my favorite and it's this is to help you learn your raw in the spirit sis if anyone has made you feel small because you know like in the indian culture in the african culture i don't know about your culture but elders are a huge thing this whole idea of speak when you're being spoken to is a huge thing and i feel like sometimes we carry that into our walks with the lord in terms of knowing ourselves in the spiritual realm sis when you know the lord when you know your identity in the father the demons will tremble and i tell you why and where i get this reference from you see in the bible when the disciples come back to jesus and like jesus jesus we kill like so many demons listen to us like my gosh we're amazing and he was like don't rejoice in the fact that the devils listen to you rejoice that your names are written in the lamb book a lamb's book of life the context of that is that they were like whoa we have so much power like we're doing what you do like wow we are up there high seated above all things like the demons listen to us and it was this whole idea that demons are so strong like we're not strong demons are going to listen to us really and jesus is saying of course like that's just so minute of course they're going to listen to you but rejoice rather in the fact that you and i we have a relationship rejoice in the fact that you now have a new name in the spirit rejoice in the fact that you now have a new bloodline in the spirit like rejoice in the fact that they listen to you because of that and so i say that to say when you get baptized sis please know that all the temptation that will come to you all the trials all the demon strategies that will come to you that try and keep you in your old vomit just know that it is so that you can learn your raw in the spirit you can learn just how huge you are in the spirit sis you were created to be a giant in the spirit because anyone that has the name of the lord on this on their foreheads as they should do in the lord after they're baptized and all of that jazz when it when that happens when you come to know the lord like that you are a giant in the spirit and the lord needs to allow these things to happen in the circumstances that it happens so that you know how loud to roar you can only do that through overcoming certain things you know and so i say that to say when you get baptized gear yourself up sis like you're about to just what you need to tap into that authority in the spirit because the bible says you have that when you come to know the lord like you have that when you come to accept jesus as your savior like there is a new name over you which has the byproduct of that name is that you have authority like as if you were adopted by the president or the king or whatever wherever you are like think of the highest person seated on the highest seat of that country of that nation imagine if you were being adopted by this person imagine the authority that you'd be walking you go into the bank and be like look i'm not waiting in the queue <laughs> So that will be it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope and I pray above you enjoying this video that you feel equipped for such a time as your baptism or your friend's baptism or your mum's baptism or your sister's baptism or your brother's baptism. Like I pray that you yourself, if you're baptized already, will feel equipped to equip somebody else for when their time of baptism comes because sis, we need to ensure that everyone that gives their life to christ will actually end up in heaven and not the other side so that being said let me know in the comment section down below what your best advice would be for those that are getting baptized as well just so that people can not only glean from this video but also glean from the comment section down below so i shall see you there and i shall also see you in the next video bye